Hey people, I'm Espen Croft and thank you for watching my channel. Today is a very exciting day because I've brought back from the dead my old sequencer program for the Atari computer. This is the Notator SL from C-Lab and I used to run this on this Atari 1040 ST computer back in the day to build up tracks and today I'm going to show you how I did it. In my first video of the series when I demonstrated Cubase, I used the Atari 520 ST and that's on the top. That was the first Atari ST computer and it's a lot smaller than the 1040 behind it. The 520 ST came in a couple of um, different models and the one you see here is the 520 ST Plus. And the plus means that it has a double uh, memory capacity than the usual 520. So this has one megabyte of memory, the same as the 1040 below. And seen from the right, you can see that the original 520 is a lot smaller than the 1040 that came after it. And that's because the 520 used an external power supply and external floppy drives, whereas the 1040 had a built-in floppy drive, as you can see at the right, and it also has built-in power, so that made it a lot bigger. And seen from the left, you can see that the 520 has only the dongle expansion port at the left, but the 1040 has those MIDI ports in and out at the left as well, because it's a bit deeper and it becomes clear seen from the back what the differences are as well. The 520 on top has the uh, uh, MIDI ports in and out at the back and the power supply in and a couple of floppy and hard drives and modem ports as well as the monitor out. Whereas the 1040 has that as well but it has moved the MIDI ports to the left as you saw in the last shot and this being the 1040 STFM it has the frequency modulator output as well so you could hook it up to an ordinary TV. So let's fire up the Notator program from the original disk and the dongle attach to see the program, which for all practical purposes are the creator program with the added module for showing the notes graphically and you could print out stems and sheet music and whatnot. Pay attention to the uh, splash screen which says Imagic Notator and not C-Lab Notator on the previous versions. I'm running 3.21 now, which, uh, which was the last version released of Notator, the ST version. And once in, you're greeted with the main window. But before I take you through some of the fun of using this program, let me show you a little demo I've made up where Notator is driving all the MIDI sound modules in real time.
I'll come back to that demo track later and the arrangement of it, but let's take a look at the main window now. And Notator Creator is a pattern-based sequencer, not linear like the Cubase program. And everything happens in the middle here where we construct our patterns, and pattern 1 is the first one. Actually, there is a pattern 0 which serves as a, a model for the 16 channels and as a stop mark. But usually we start in pattern 1 and build our way up, and later we will arrange all the different patterns in the arrange part of the window, where we can build up our song by uh, putting in patterns to play at certain times where we want to. Each pattern has 16 tracks, and uh, each track has a set of parameters. And we have some transport controls at the right, and on top we have uh, window menus like you're used to from any other modern program. But we'll work in the pattern mode for this, and we'll set some basic parameters at top there, like tempo, format, and signature, and then we start up building the first pattern which can be an intro, it can be a verse, it can be a chorus, you decide what you want it to be. I'll start by setting the MIDI click at the channel where I have my Roland R8 attached, and I'll use MIDI channel 10 to get that MIDI click so I can hear the metronome going. And at the first track I want to use some drums from the R8, and it's a good thing to name your tracks accordingly and what type of sound which is playing. That'll keep this uh, project organized throughout and it'll be a lot easier to read on screen what uh, MIDI channel is doing what and what sound source is playing that. So in channel 10 I have, have my R8 and uh, every track now is on channel 10. I can change that later. That's why it says R8 throughout, one throughout the 16th channel. And let's put it on record. I'll get a count in and I can play. And that's the kick. And so you can see I've recorded it and now it says OK. And I can of course rename that to be something I want. But let's first, let's quantize that part to sixteenths. That's very easily done in Notator. And let's name that track Kick. So the kick on track 1 from the R8 on sixteenths. I only have to record a couple of bars, because in this pattern-based sequencer I can set each track to loop everywhere I want. And the loop point doesn't have to be the same for all tracks in the pattern, you can set it exactly where you want for each track, very flexible. So let's hear that back. So that's the kick, looping exactly like I want it. So let's do another track, also on channel 10. And that's the snare, let's record that. And I'll quantize that to sixteenths as well, and I will also set a loop point for that snare, which, is, has, which has to be double of what I did with the kick, because I played the snare a little bit longer and I had that snare fill at the end, so I wanted to repeat at that point. And I set the loop uh, for the kick at loop point 8, and I will set the snare at loop point 16, because I played it a little longer the double length of the uh, of the way I played the kick. So the kick was uh, at loop point 8 and this will be at 16. 4 bars times 4 equals 16. So let's hear that back. Oops. So that's perfect, and what we need now is a couple of hats. So 
So that'll get the same treatment, 16th uh, of quantizing and a loop point of 16 as well. If only I could type in correctly on this German keyboard. I'm not German, so I have to uh, do it a couple of times to get it right. So now we have kick, snare, and hats. And now let's try some polyphony from a synth. And on channel 4 I have the Akai S612 sampler. The old vintage sampler, which I love. And I have a, a video on that on my channel, so check that out. Now this has to be looped uh, a bit longer out in the uh, in the actual track, but the quantizing is the same as uh, the other sounds. And let's name that poly synth or poly steel, which I've called this instrument on my sampler, and this has to be on uh, uh, loop point thirty two. And there it repeated itself. So all the loop points are individual from each other. Very flexible and very cool. And the only thing uh, lacking now is some bass. And I have a little bit of bass on my Roland S10 sampler. Which is a direct sample of the Roland Juno 6. I've sampled that into uh, almost all the samplers I have, because all samplers sound a little bit different, and so will the sample itself, or the bass itself. But I like it from the Roland S10. So that was that, we'll quantize that as well, so this will be very robotic and mechanical in, uh, in the quantizing department, but that'll suit the track nicely. That's the bass, and let's quickly head that back. And we'll have to loop that as well if you want this to uh, go on continuously. So that's the pattern number one. But how do we make this into a section of a complete song? Well, let's take a look at the arranged part of the window to the left there where it says arrange intro one. So what I'm going to do is gonna, I'm going to copy this pattern from pattern one to pattern two. That'll make an exact carbon copy of the pattern one. I've just renamed those patterns intro. So now it's intro one on pattern one and intro two on pattern two. And I'm going to mute a couple of tracks on the intro two, the pattern two. I'm going to record a new kick uh, on that track. So let's do that. To separate it from the, uh, the other pattern. So that's fine, it's already on the quantize 16th. I don't need any loop points on this because it's only going to go on for a couple of bars. So that's the new kick and let's do another uh, polysteel synth as well. Let's get on to 
channel 4 and record that again. So that's enough of that. It's already on Quantize uh, 16th and the loop is out. And here comes the beauty of the pattern-based sequencer like Notator. Now I want this to be the first part of my song. So I have intro 2 and I have intro 1. And now I'm going to arrange those into the arranged part of the Notator program. And I'll do that over here. So I want the intro 2 to be the first part of the song. So I'm going to say to Notator, play intro 2 at bar 1. And now I want to expand this arrangement and I just click and drag out another instance and now I set this to play intro 1, the pattern 1 and that is going to start at bar 5. So I'm going to play the intro 2 from bar 1 to bar 4 and by, by bar 5 I want the intro 1 pattern to play. And to get this going I just press on on the arrange button and all that's left is to press start. Two, three, four. Now this will only play out as long as that pattern is, but I can uh, Make another instance now, since I only have two patterns made, I have to alternate between those two. And this is how you build up the whole arrangement of a song you're working on. You divide it into patterns, which are intros, choruses, pre-choruses, bridges, etc., etc. And you break it down like that in the pattern-based sequencer. So let's take a look at my demo track then. As you can see, I have a lot more patterns going here. I have patterns called bridge, go, intro, etc., etc. And I build it up in the arranged part and the intro starts at bar 1, and I go into a pattern called Go at bar 13. And I have the bridge at bar 41, the out at bar 51, and the end at bar 79. So I have some kicks, some synths, some basses, pads, etc. in this arrangement. So by muting parts, I can audition the different tracks in the pattern. I've also taken advantage of other parameters in the track uh, parameter settings like velocity and compression, which compresses the MIDI data or increases the velocity or decreases it. So that was the main part, the go pattern. I have a bridge pattern with just some kick and a nice synth guitar from the TX81Z. And a clap from the S10. That's made to make some momentum before the uh, second part of the go pattern which takes it all up and I've added some hi-hats as well to that second out pattern because they are different I'm calling this out but it's the same as the first one And 
that's the end part where I only play the uh, S612 alone. And that pattern ends it. And that's how I built up this uh, demo track. And I know many of you are interested in the gear I use, so here's a little rundown of the actual gear used. I have the Yamaha TX802 playing those electronic toms you hear throughout the, um, the main parts of the demo track. I have the Yamaha TX81Z playing that synth guitar as you heard in the bridge. I use the Yamaha A3000 sampler only as an effects unit. I love the effects on that. And I have the Roland D550 playing that synth soaring uh, type lead sound coming in and out of the main part. The drums are the R8 from Roland, fantastic drum machine, and I use it for much of my music. I've sampled those samples to death already, but uh, coming out of the R8 itself is very nice. The gloriously crunchy Akai S612 sampler, fast and easy to use, sounds magnificent, and the Bits 01 from Krumar doing the pads on this. Analog filters, and it sounds so warm and nice. I use the Lexicon PCM81 and the Eventide H3000 as effects units on those sounds in this rack. The R8 gets its effects, uh, the reverb, from the Behringer mixing board itself, I think. I'm using the Beta 1 in stereo out mode, which behaves almost like an old Oberheim with its stereo spread. I was probably a little careless with the um, amount of reaper and flanging effects on this S10, hence the, uh, the effect going below everything in the track. But here we have it, my most revered sequencer program back in the day. I made tons of music on this over a 3-4 to four year period, and um, I really loved pattern-based sequencers back then. A little later in life I learned to appreciate linear sequencing as well and I pretty much converted over to Cubase but going back now and taking a look another look at this uh, wonderful sequencer I'm starting to feel a little inclined going back to pattern based music even though I've said so in forums and comments on my channel last year that I'm not into pattern based music uh, I sort of feel a little bit in love with this program again, so I might use it for some other songs in my production line uh, later this year. We'll see, maybe I'll make a, a video on it. 
Anyway, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I thank you for being part of my little world here. So uh, have a nice spring and summer and I'll see you soon. Cheers.